And Chris, this is, uh, well, it's such a complex area politically, strategically, geographically, every, in every way, the Middle East. The government's walking this line, as Olivia put it, uh, white-knuckling this, this period, saying we support a ceasefire, but we also support Israel's right to defend itself. And the two things, as I put to the Prime Minister, aren't they contradictory? They don't add up. You know, the Prime Minister's trying to please everyone and pleasing no one, and I don't know if he's walking a line. I think he's standing on two very rocky stools and, and trying to, to bridge that great divide. And the problem that he's got is a large section of his own base now is really pro-Palestinian. And if he doesn't say things like that, then he's going to cop it from there. Clearly, the Greens uh, see an opportunity in Labor's seats on all of that kind of stuff. But you cannot defend yourself and not fight. And so you can't call for a ceasefire from Israel if you say they have the right to defend themselves against Hezbollah. The problem that Israel has is how far will it have to go in order to consider that it can defend itself? It has to create a buffer zone with Hezbollah. I mean, it's pushing them back from the border of Israel as far at least as the Latani River, which is 30 kilometres inland, and they will have to clear it all. They will have to send in troops. They can't do that with bombs, which means we're going to see images like we saw out of Gaza coming out of Lebanon. On, and they haven't finished the job in Gaza. And you've got, to, as, as I mentioned to Olivia, the, the government <clears throat> really squeezed on this issue from the, the left with the Greens, going hard as you like, abstaining from the condolence yesterday for Israel, and on the right, um, the, the coalition all in when it comes to Israel. The, the Prime Minister and the government hoping that the middle aren't really taking much notice. Yeah, and I think that there are more people who are probably focused on the cost of living. But when they do focus on this kind of thing, it does look untidy. I mean, the beauty of deciding that you're going to pick and stick one side or the other is that your position is clear. The problem that Anthony Albanese has is one of clarity. And while it looks like he doesn't have clarity on this issue, if people are getting a message, it's one that there is no real no real fight in this government, no real position that they can they can get behind. So it's very difficult to vote for a shadow. And at the moment, the Labor Party is casting a shadow over this debate. It's not defined by and there what are, it says. And as you said quite rightly, internally there are those issues where, as one um, senior Liberal put it to me yesterday, they'd been watching it on in uh, dismay over the many ALP conferences, the nudging and shifting on this issue gradually away from Israel was their view. The Prime Minister rejected the notion that he'd abandoned Israel. He says his position is consistent with the United States, with the G7. Well, look, you know, the position of the Labor Party over the course of as many Labor conferences you'd like to see is those who are defending Israel becoming a smaller and smaller group against those who are attacking it, becoming a larger one, seeking motions. This was usually the fight that you get a Labor Party conference over the wording of what they were going to say about Israel. And we've seen a walking back of Labor Party's position for a very long time now. I think the best example of that is someone like Bob Carr. Bob Carr begins his career as pro-US and pro-Israel. He's ending his career as pro-China and pro-Palestine. So that's an enormous distance to travel in a short time. Finally, the NBN bill today, a bill to ensure it's not privatised. Yes, a bill to ensure that something that's not likely to happen won't happen. And I guess that they see a kind of save Medi Medicare scare campaign in the lead up to the government. You can imagine in tactics this morning or yesterday morning or wherever it was, Kieran, where they were saying, why don't we try and wedge the uh, opposition on NBN say that they might sell it. Well, I don't know that most people would care enough about NBN to, to be concerned about that, but maybe there's some polling that sa says that people are, but I don't know it's going to get an enormous amount of traction. I think it's going to be co cost of living front and centre, and if there's any question over what's going on in Gaza and, and, and with Israel, it will be one of character. It is the thing that the, the coalition keeps coming back to, that the Prime Minister is weak. That's the only point they want out of this. They're underlining it every day. Chris Yulman, thank you.